Sitting across from me via a Zoom interview is Christiane Bass, who is joining us from Canada. The reason for our conversation is that recently we ran a series of episodes regarding livestock guardian dogs that generated a lot of interest amongst our viewers. Some of those lengthy interviews touched upon Kuvashsak, but sometimes they did not portray the breed in a positive way. Thus we thought it would be very interesting and worthwhile to ask an expert who resides on the other side of the world, where there are harsh living conditions, specifically in Canada. He is involved with Kuvashsak and has experience and insight regarding how Kuvashsak are performing on the other side of the world in a very different environment, in a different climate and under unique challenges. So, we are talking with Christian Bass. First I would like to ask Christian to tell us who he is. Where does he come from? Where does he live now? How he first became involved with the breed and why he chose Kuvashsak. Good day. I'm Christian Vass, the president of the QVAS Club of Canada, a function which I have been serving since 2017. However, my history with the QVAS goes back to my childhood. I received my first QVAS when I was 10 years old. To be honest, back then I did not like that dog that much, nor the breed because I was unable to handle it as a kid, nor did I really understand what this breed was all about back then. Thus, at the time, my father handled that dog mostly, but he was the type of cuvass that fit all those legendary stereotypes that the breed is famous for, real toughness, endurance, completely undemanding, that real temperament that is expected of a cuvass, he never back away from or feared anything. So when that dog passed away, I went off to university, then on to a master's degree, and all the way to a PhD, and I was studying environmental studies. My PhD was involved with bird conservation. Throughout this process of post-secondary studies, 12 years passed where I did not have a dog at all. When I arrived back in Canada, as I was conducting my PhD in New Zealand, my wife suggested maybe we should buy some type of dog. We explored various breeds and, no matter what I showed her, she did not like any of them. So I said to her, look during my childhood I had this breed, what do you think of this? So we went to visit a local breeder, and my wife really liked them, they were white, fluffy and teddy bear-like, which was all true, but for myself, I really did not like them. When I saw these dogs and compared them to the Cuvass I had remembered from my childhood, this was a big shock for me because they did not resemble Cuvassic, at least not what I consider a correct Cuvass, but their temperaments were also completely different. These were totally friendly, neutrally behaving dogs that would allow anyone onto their property, and I think anyone could put a leash on them and take them home. So what this expert fiends did was ignite a fire in me, and I knew I needed a QVAS again, just not like these types. So in 2016 the world meeting of Kovacic and QVAS owners took place in Hortobagy in Hungary so I started to research various breeders to try and find the type of QVAS that I considered the real QVAS. Initially I contacted the breeder of my first QVAS, but he was no longer breeding and was not involved in the breed for more than a decade. I said, okay, no problem. You no longer breed Kovacic, but tell me where I can find a Cuvass like the old one that I used to have. That is when he told me, you won't find any like that anymore. So I said, how could that be? He said, you will see that no matter how much you search or where you go, you will not find one like that anymore. Nonetheless, he suggested a few people I should contact, so I went and sought them out and as I contacted more and more breeders, explored their dogs, looked at pictures and even visited some. I started to realize that he was right and the current dogs were not what they once were, but I tried to find something similar and suitable. So when this world meeting concluded, I brought home Borza Party Orseg Zenta and she became the foundation botch of my current breeding program. Everything was built off of her and slowly various males were imported from bloodlines that I thought were work capable, and lastly I imported frozen semen from various males that demonstrated correct type and temperament in accordance with tat I thought was my comprehension regarding what is the old style cuvass. How were you able to test the working ability of the various bloodlines in order to choose which bloodlines were appropriate? In one part one knew of the reputation of certain breeding programs and what others had said about them, second I considered the environments those dogs were living in and of course there was also a kind of marketing in the part of those breeders. For example, I brought in a dog from Vojvodina, northern Serbia, 
from a place where I knew the digs were beside livestock and living in harsher conditions and the pretext was present to enable them to be good livestock guardian dogs. There were also those dogs that I imported whose ancestors were placed in the field beside livestock in Transylvania and one would assume if they were successful there then they would also produce work-capable offspring that can work successfully in Canada. Sometimes, these two factors, namely the environment and having working dog ancestors, proved to be beneficial and it did transfer to the next generation, but at other times it did not seem to have an impact on the working capability of the offspring. Either way, I was already attempting back then to try and avoid those types of dogs and bloodlines that Solal, why prioritized show dogs. Later on I will touch upon in more detail on the differences in the bloodlines and talk about the selection criteria. In short this is a brief synopsis about me. What is most important to understand about Canada is that we have such an opportunity right now because first of all this big country is relatively empty and sparsely populated with only 38 million inhabitants. We still have an Sundance of wild lands, we have a lot of predators, and we still have active farming communities, ranchers and abundance of animal husbandry. Therefore when you combine the facts that there is the abundance of predators as well as livestock numbers, it is without a doubt that there is great demand for livestock guardian breeds. So the demand for LGDs is huge, contrary to the constant narrative coming out of Hungary where they keep saying well, this is the 21st century, and there is no demand for LGDs and we should do something else with Kvasik, to reform them or change them to better fit this new era, and that we should find them a new function. I completely disagree with this. And, I am not only speaking about Canada, since we also send a lot of our dogs to the United States to places like Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, etc. In the western states there is especially great demand where there are now thriving wolf populations and predators. Moreover, we can look at other places too such as Australia. When I did my PhD, and I went to various conferences I met people who studied LGDs, and they were actively using the Italian Maremma dogs. So then I asked myself why are we not trying to utilize Kvasik there, as it too presents a great opportunity. It is the same situation in Argentina or Brazil, as there are great opportunities for LGDs there as well. Therefore there are many places in the world that need LGDs. I understand that Hungary is a smaller country of 10 million people in Central Europe and has limitations, but even their demand for LGDs will rise as predators are coming back and spreading, particularly the golden jackal. The other thing we constantly hear is that something needs to be done to make the breed more popular or raise added awareness about them, I agree, but what type of added popularity is the goal? To rework, reform and rebrand the entire breed away from what it is, or are we attempting to preserve it in its historic form? Do we want the Qvas to be preserved as an LGD as our ancestors had envisioned them, or for the Qvas to merely be a Qvas on paper only? This is the bid dilemma. I am trying to preserve the Qvas in its historical form, to perform its historical function. What LGD breeds are most utilized in Canada for work and what are your experiences? How well known is the Kuvas? What are people's notions or perceptions regarding the Kuvas? So here the most popular LGD breed is the Great Pyrenees, and I would say that approximately 60-70% to 70 of the working LGDs one encounters here are Great Pyrenees. The second most popular is the Italian Maremma. After those it is the Akbash and Anatolian Shepherd. Sometimes other similar breeds are included or even cross-bred with Anatolians, such as Bosch Shepherds or Kangles, this is sometimes a matter or definition. Regardless, the Great Pyrenees and Maremma are most popular. The issue with the Qvas is that when we go to various farming communities or sheep or wool events, and we start talking about the breed, most have never heard of the Qvas. Most just look at me puzzled as they have never heard of them in their life. There are also those who have heard of the breed before and say yes. I heard about them, but they are show dogs and perhaps they saw them when Westminster was aired on TV. Well, that is not a Qvas, at least NOI for me. And, the third, but a minority says, yes I am familiar with them, or I said one, but they are useless. Sorry. I didn't understand. You said, yes I had one before, but? But is it useless? Yes, useless. Some described they tried the breed, placed it in the field, but it did not work out as either the dog did not guard, 
ran away or had high prey drive and bugged the livestock. In their types of situations, I try and find out who did they have the dog from, how was the dog, how was the situation set up, what type of pack was the dog in, etc., in order to try and figure out what was the real reason that particular cuvass was not successful. Most of the time it becomes apparent that they tried to use Western bloodlines, and in my personal experience having dealt with them, the bloodlines here were less suitable as some lack guardian instinct and in many instances they were diluted and softened to serve the purpose of an LGD. So our main goal is to have farmers try out the cuvass and give the breed a chance. In many cases then out dogs end up in existing packs with other LGD breeds. Of course, those who have had a negative experience with the cuvass, we try to convince them to give the breed a second chance. I will also add that there are sometimes also those farmers who do ample research, read a lot and hear that the cuvass guards differently from the Great Pyrenees, which is completely true. What am I trying to say? The Great Pyrenees and Maremma are the types of LGDs that stick close to the livestock of flock and do not readily leave further than a few hundred meters to engage predators, meanwhile the cuvass guards more from a distance, patrolling a wider area and likes to more readily confront predators. So there are those farmers who might buy a few of the close guarding breeds and a few cuvass and theoretically they try to ensure that the livestock is protected both within the close parameter as well as at a distance. So they know these two breeds have a different guarding style, and this is certainly true. This is one reason I personally do not believe in cross-breeding LGDs, because they all have their own guarding style, each designed for a specific terrain and most suited to a specific scenario. By mixing two breeds nobody really knows what they will get, would the offspring be more like a Pyrenees or a Cuvass? Of course there are such mixes as accidents happen, and they are also mixed with Maremmas at times as well. Kovacic, at least the bloodlines I try to utilize are more aggressive, more committed and tenacious than the Pyrenees and Maremmas, especially towards people. Sorry to interrupt. But I want to ask, in the regions where your dogs end up working, what types of predators do the dogs mostly encounter or need to repel? I imagine Canada is a huge country and there are many different serious predators the dogs might face. Since the country is very big, we cannot generalize it as a whole. Here where I live on the eastern side, in Ontario, here black bears and coyotes are most abundant and the population of both of those predator species is increasing. Coyotes are particularly problematic and they are a predator that originates from the western side of the continent, but they are moving eastward and spreading and are also crossbreeding with wolves as there is natural hybridization occurring. Such a mix brings about an animal that is much bigger than the typical coyote, but is also capable of adapting to more near-urban environments unlike wolves that are predominantly weary of humans. Wolves in general are very shy and stay away from people, but coyotes readily enter urban settings and they sometimes even take dogs from backyards. These animals are often referred to as coy wolves. Sometimes coyotes can even cross-breed with domestic dogs, which can also create dangerous predators. However, if we consider what is out west, over there there are serious wolf packs, grizzly bears, cougars, coyotes, black bears, etc. Regardless of the predator species, the dogs must be ready and able to face any adversary. This is why this must be set up very carefully, and we must interview the farmer and find out their exact needs and what predator challenges they face, get an idea of the exact environment, size of the land, topography and terrain, number of livestock, that are to be guarded, the number of and species of predators, what type of threat and pressure do they pose, what are their patterns, what type of LGD pack exists already and with what other dogs Mustang the Cuvass coexist? These are all essential considerations to ensure the highest chances of success. I'll give you a real example, I received a call from a British Columbia farmer who was looking for an LGD. In his case between May and September wolves have killed 20 adult cattle as the local wolf pack has about 20 members. I said to him, okay, I would gladly be willing to help, but what can I do? I cannot send out two or even three pups to an area where there are 20 wolves, as there is no way they can stop them, and realistically they will probably just kill the dogs. So partially, we also have a capacity problem in figuring out how to set things up in a scenario like the one I just mentioned. We need a serious adult LGD pack that can confront and stand a chance in such a situation. 
So now we are thinking that some of the breeders in our club, who are also active farmers could potentially keep back some pups raise them to at least adolescence, of maybe 8, 9 or 10 months, or perhaps even older, get them accustomed to livestock, form a viable and bonded pack and then perhaps place them into such an environment, where they will likely have higher chances of success. I have to also be honest that this is also a process where sometimes we lose dogs, and there is no sense of hiding this, and I also know that some might say that this is a brutal way of selection, but there are even cases where not only are dogs killed by predators, but actually eaten. I know of a few examples, where only bits of white hair were found. This is done by coyotes, cougars, wolves, or bears? Even coyotes will eat the dogs, but wolves especially will do it given the opportunity. Cougars usually will not consume the dogs, but might just kill them. I know of an incident with coyotes where two Kavasik were out in a field and ran into a coyote pack with perhaps five or six coyotes who surrounded the dogs and nipped at the dog's heels until they were able to take it off its feet, and they killed it and ate it. This unfortunately happens, but this is why it is vital to breed good dogs and good structure and anatomy is also vital so that the dogs can move easily, be very maneuverable, and if needed be able to escape. Christian, earlier you said that you were not very satisfied with the Western or Canadian or American Kuvash sock as you found them to be too soft, and you also mentioned that in Hungary where you looked around at various breedings, most were also not the old type of Kuvas you imagined to be work capable, so then how did you overcome this huge challenge and where did you obtain your dogs from, how do you guys select them? How did you manage to reintroduce this modern Kuvas back to performing its historic function, or perhaps not exactly like in the past? but something close to that. So if we look at the Western dogs such as the Canadian and American Kovacic, I would broadly put them into two main categories. Most of the Canadian dogs were big, heavy, lumbering and resembled Great Pyrenees. These dogs are now few and far between as we have consistently introduced Hungarian bloodlines which produced great improvements and even the phenotype is now vastly improved so that few remnants remain of these dogs. Meanwhile, the American dogs can be generally characterized as being smaller, more refined, lighter, perhaps with good movement, but mostly intended for the show ring. We tried to utilize both types in the past. The first type was not always successful, because the slow and heavy movement really hindered the dog's working ability, and they were not very aggressive. The other category went through such counter-selection in the past 50 or 60 years of being a pure show dog that they were overly softened and by this I do not only refer to aggression towards predators or temperament, but also things like coping with severe environmental conditions or being able to eat anything. These working dogs will not get special treatment in terms of food, accommodation, etc. I would say that in terms of the Hungarian dogs, this level of counter-selection has not yet taken place although it is now actively occurring. However, in the, let's say last 50, 60 or perhaps last 100 years since animal husbandry has really declined in Hungary, it has not had that strong an impact on the population yet, whereby they would have lost their guarding or working abilities. I think every litter has pups that are really good, and there are also pups in every litter that are terrible. So if I understand correctly, Dogs were imported from Hungary or from the surrounding countries that have significant Hungarian minority populations? Because as I see it, the Canadian Kuvas population is growing and more and more dogs are placed into working environments. Yes my dogs are all either from Hungary, Vojvodina, northern Serbia, and some have Transylvanian ancestors as well. There were also people in Hungary who actively placed dogs into working environments such as Georgi Udvari Kennel, owned by Fekete Georgi and we can see that dogs from his bloodline are still functional and are proving themselves as work capable. Also the bloodline I obtained from Serbia in my opinion is very good especially considering all the positive LGD attributes and success rate of the puppies coming out of this bloodline. Even now if you buy a Qvas pup from Hungary from so-called show lines, although I do not believe that the Qvas population can currently be split between show and work lines, but even from such mainstream lines, there will be pups that can become viable LGDs. So I do not think the working ability has been removed from the QVAS yet, but I think it is essential to stop this counter-selection and focus on appropriate and stringent selection criteria. What does this real selection mean? It means placing the dog into an environment where it can demonstrate what it is capable of, and it will either stay alive and thrive, or it will fail and possibly perish. 
situations also occur where the dog is initially good, but the very next year it fails. In order for this natural style selection to occur, three must be the presence of large predators which they must confront, and I do not mean engaging in direct conflict with them. However, we can even observe that when a dog first smells a wolf or even a coyote, there are some dogs that instantly become fearful and crumble under the pressure and are afterwards useless as LGDs, but there are also those dogs that are continuously exposed to predators, readily confront them, and have also learned how to survive and thrive in such an environment. Therefore, the intelligence of such dogs is also very important as is their ability to work in a pack. In a previous interview it was mentioned that Kovacic cannot live in a pack. I completely disagree with this notion. Of course there are bad individuals that cannot fit into s pack, but I know examples where even four intact males live together. Of course they sometimes fight to sort out their hierarchy, but they can coexist together. So we shouldn't instantly portray the cuvas as useless as that cannot be known until they are tried. I will tell you honestly, we've lost numerous dogs, either because they ran away, got hit by a car or a train, or they escaped and were never seen again, or lost to predators, but I believe this is the only way to really undertake her strict selection and find out which dog is viable and work capable. I believe if a dog can make seven or eight years in such a harsh environment, then that is a very good dog and should definitely be used for breeding. So now our goal is to bring back dogs into our breedings that were successful working dogs. We have brought back and mixed in some dogs like this already into our kennels, but the next step would be to directly breed working dogs from different places with each other and try and establish a pure working bloodline. Of course this is also not easy due to distance and logistical reasons. How big is the current Canadian Kuvas population and how many puppies are born in Canada annually? Just so that our viewers can get a sense of the numbers and can compare them to the Hungarian population and trends. Here in Canada the population is growing and only because there is a demand for the dogs. If there was no demand for our dogs, then the numbers would not be increasing. This year to date 96 puppies were born, and will surely have a few more litters, so we will surpass 100. If we look at the past five years since I have been leading the club, the population has drastically increased. Our entire club, all of us are committed to promoting the QVAS as a LGD. We do not have a dedicated small part of our breeder involved in a so-called program of some type like we have seen in other places, rather our entire country is committed to the LGD cause and therefore approximately 70% of the puppies born end up beside livestock. Of those 70% not all will be good or viable, but a significant amount is proving to be successful. I reviewed our statistics and during 2017 and 2018, in those two years we placed 90 puppies into working homes. Christian. Do I understand this correctly? In Hungary numbers fluctuate yearly, but as I understand it the number of puppies born annually is between 200 and 300 and as I understand in Canada the number of puppies born this year will exceed 100 and roughly 70% of these end up as LGDs? Did I understand these numbers correctly? Yes you understood the numbers correctly. I will also add that we have a few young or upcoming breeders who will breed in a year or two, and I am certain that we can exceed 150 puppies in a few years, but my real goal for the club that I set is for us to reach an annual puppy birth rate of 200 puppies. I think this is completely achievable as we currently only have three breeders, but in a few years' time we will have six or seven. So we want to achieve 200 a year. This is a huge achievement, as slowly you will reach the numbers of puppies that are born in Hungary. Is there any type of support from the Hungarian side? from perhaps breeders, or official breed organizations or clubs? Is anybody providing you with any type of support or help? There isn't any. To be honest it saddens me, but there isn't any. There in Hungary the main breeding concept is this counter-selection to reform the QVAS to be something else, a sport dog, trying to make it popular in that way, by taking them in front of museums, shows etc. There is a layer of people who are innate anti-LGD, and no matter what I do or illustrate, or say look here is this opportunity, they don't care. I know those people who have tried this LGD approach in Transylvania faced similar opposition.